Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today in gaming, we get the inside scoop on Battlefield 5's development, Warzone got a new sniper rifle, the Odyssey Alpha got a big update, and much more. We finally have an inside look at Battlefield 5's infamous TTK updates. For those who don't know, Battlefield 5 had two major updates that slowed the average time to kill of all weapons. Both updates were universally criticized by players and eventually reverted. As it turns out, there might have been a grander vision of these TTK 2.0 updates that was never fully realized. Recently, a former DICE developer opened up about the changes on social media. He says the plan was to bring Firestorm's armor system into the standard multiplayer game. Players would spawn in wearing armor and could replenish it from the assault class kit. Picking the armor box as an assault player would replace your launchers. The dev goes on to say that you could choose to spawn with the armor or gain other benefits instead. It was initially designed around the game's combat role system, but DICE never fleshed that system out and it was all scrapped. The dev blamed the turmoil surrounding the TTK changes and scrapped armor system on the studio's internal division. Now, it's tough to know how this grander vision of Battlefield 5 would have actually been played. One of Battlefield 5's many problems was consistency. Adding an armor system into the mix that would have had players running around with varying amounts of health would have made gunfights even less consistent than they already were. Unless you're a medic or have a self-heal available, there was no real way to fully heal once you took enough damage. Adding an armor system on top of that could have led to pure chaos. Aside from the extremely buggy launch and, well, frankly, mostly a buggy lifetime for the game, Battlefield 5 also suffered from unnecessary innovations. It'll be interesting to see if the developers have learned from their mistakes with Battlefield 5 going into Battlefield 6. Call of Duty Warzone has a new sniper rifle, the ZRG 20mm. It's already proving to be a solid contender for the best heavy duty sniper rifle. In recent months, the lighter duty snipers have taken over Warzone's meta because of their faster handling. It'll probably take a few days for players to find the optimal loadouts for the ZRG and see how it stacks up against the rest of Warzone's weapons. Last week, three new maps were added to Modern Warfare, Call of Duty 4's Kill House, a gunfight map called Drainage, and a 6v6 map called Rab Airbase. The devs added them without warning and it seems like at least two of them were added by accident. Drainage and Rab Airbase have been removed from the game for now. Killhouse is still available and even has a dedicated 24-7 playlist. Overall, it's been a quiet week for Call of Duty. We can expect some big updates leading to the launch of Season 3 next month though. Today, the zombies infestation has moved to Atlas Superstore. Beyond that, there haven't been any significant changes to the ongoing zombie event. The Alpha for Elite Dangerous's Odyssey expansion has been updated with a 24-player deathmatch mode. The update introduces conflict zones. Players can go to these zones and sign up for a 12v12 match. A taxi will take you to the final destination. Players have also been given a free ship to fly around with so that they don't have to rely on taxis for interplanetary travel. There are several Alpha updates to come that will add new features and content for players to test out. Resident Evil Reverse multiplayer beta was suspended due to matchmaking issues. It sounds like the problem is the sheer number of players trying to get into matches. The recent beta for Capcom's other Resident Evil multiplayer game Resistance had the same problem. It's unclear when the Reverse beta will be live again. Arcane Studios announced Deathloop is delayed to September 14th. The game was originally launching on May 21st, but was postponed to ensure the game launches in a good state without compromising the health and safety of the studio's employees. Deathloop is a new IP from the studio that blends abilities and mechanics from Dishonored with time travel and more of a 60s vibe. I actually think it looks really interesting. Apex Legends is getting a new event next week called War Games. It'll offer five limited time modes that rotate availability over two weeks. Armor Regen will have shields that recharge when not taking damage. Killing Time sets a timer for a match that gets reduced by a fixed amount every time a player dies. Auto Banners automatically retrieves the banners of downed teammates for you. Ultra Zones gives players three locations to fight over high tier loot, and Second Chance gives every player a free respawn per match. It sounds like Respawn are toying with new gameplay tweaks for Apex's main modes. While some of these limited time modes sound like they'd be a bit overkill for regular matches, some would be really exciting additions. 
Overwatch's latest update added NVIDIA Reflex support. This reduces the render latency on compatible NVIDIA GPUs and can have a meaningful impact at frame rates below 120 FPS. Above that, the differences tend to be a bit more negligible, but considering that most players are probably getting 120 FPS or less, it's a solid addition to any game. Deadly Premonition 2 is launching on Steam this year. It's currently a Nintendo Switch exclusive and is the sequel to the cult classic original. The game launched back in 2010 and proved to be a very popular title given how eccentric it was. You played as an FBI agent in an open world murder mystery. The sequel has also been well reviewed but held back by the Switch's weak hardware. The PC port doesn't have a release date other than 2021. Hideo Kojima isn't secretly developing a new PlayStation 5 exclusive title called Abandoned. The game was revealed yesterday with a teaser trailer. It's a cinematic FPS horror game with survival elements and realistic graphics. Speculation ran wild while the trailer was released, suggesting Kojima was actually developing the game in secret. The developers have since confirmed that they have no association with Kojima. As for why people thought Kojima was behind the game, that's a little complicated. Metal Gear Solid The Fantasy and Pain was revealed back in 2012 during the Video Game Awards. Its developer was listed as Moby Dick Studios. It was eventually revealed as Kojima's next entry in the Metal Gear franchise. Oddworld Soulstorm is the latest entry in the Oddworld franchise and it launched yesterday. The developers just released a patch to fix issues on the PlayStation versions of the game. It should fix some crashes, leaderboard issues, and voiceovers. A bigger patch is coming in the next few days to fix some other problems. Before we get to our final story today, thanks for tuning in. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. We cover gaming news six days a week, so there's a lot you might be missing out on if you're not subscribed. Path of Exile was already a pretty good looking game, but the sequel is taking things to a whole new level. The visuals are bordering on the photorealistic, at least for the environments. The animations and attack effects are also much more explosive and expressive. As for the content of the reveal, the game's second act will take place in a desert area. The player works their way through enemies as they cross the desert, exploring the act's main hub, traveling through a mountain pass, into a tunnel network, and continuing to a new area at the end. The gameplay isn't just limited to tight corridors or ruins, though. There are wide open plains littered with monsters as well. One of the boss fights shown in the gameplay videos is set in a cave against a rock monster. The environment actually ends up being part of the fight as standing in a shaft of light prevents players from actually getting hit by falling rocks. Other boss fights look a bit more traditional with the player locked into a static arena. The regular enemies are also pretty brutal. Many of their attacks knock the player's health to nearly nothing. The gameplay makes it clear that just sitting and tanking damage isn't going to be easy. The developers are focusing more on mobility this time around by adding attacks that can be interrupted at key times to offer either a light or heavy attack pattern. Path of Exile 2 is launching sometime next year. It'll offer a total of 7 acts at launch, with expansions and updates adding content for years to come. If the continued success and quality of the original game is anything to go by, Diablo 4 is in for some stiff competition. And that wraps it up for Today in Gaming. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.